Hello, New Life. We are back doing these uh, pre-worship recordings. It's been a few weeks. It's been a little busy, but um, I'm going to call this July 5th, 2020 pre-worship, a living hope, and catching up on the last couple of weeks. And we've got a few, a little bit of, to catch up on. kind of want to give you guys a little background on also um, why we're playing catch up. There's been a lot of stuff going on at the church, a lot in the background that you haven't seen um, necessarily, and then some things that you have seen. And you may have noticed online that it's it's changed a little bit, a little bit week to week as we've been trying to make improvements, trying to figure things out, um, trying to make the overall service in person and online as we navigate through through this um, this time of the COVID crisis and and everything else going on. So. Um, a few of the things that have been going on, we've upgraded a lot of different hardware, um, we've upgraded a few different services, and a few different things in the background, like I said, these are things that you're probably not going to see. Um, a lot of it's in the sound booth or on the stage, uh, new cameras. Um, we've also had the return of the congregation with the COVID thing. We were without congregation for a while, so that made kind of doing the live stream and recording a little bit easier. But we've also had to do multi-services with bringing people back a little bit at a time so that was definitely a new thing for us um, uh, being a smaller church we've never done multiple uh, services so that was definitely a new experience um, and with that we had the online portion and the in-person portion um, and trying to figure out how to do this online thing to a higher quality than just having a camera in the back corner like we used to do um, make that production level a little bit better and flow it with what we're currently doing in person um, we, we had quite a bit of a learning curve to do there. Um, we've added announcements and, um, and the streaming of the service to the fellowship TV and also to the downstairs TV. So once we do get back to Sunday school, we will have the announcements going, um, during that time. That way you can stay caught up on what's going on in the church and what events are coming up a little bit easier. Um, it, it'll happen before church and in between Sunday school, um, and in, in the service as well. We also made some um, stream improvements to the nursery to make the sound quality better. There's lack of a lag there. Um, so hopefully the nursery workers can can see the service a little better, have a little bit better idea of, you know, kind of the timing and when kids are coming, when kids are going, um, and a few different things with that as well. Uh, we've upgraded from Pro Presenter 6 to Pro Presenter 7, which has made a lot of these other things possible when you see the words on the screen that's largely due to the capabilities we now have with ProPresenter 7. Um, we learned OBS which is online broadcasting system. Um, it's it's a new thing for us it's it's been out for a long time but we've never used it never really had to mess with it and it's an amazing software really for free um, to be able to do uh, the broadcast the way we do with the camera and the overlay with the, the words and there's a whole bunch of other things um, that, that software does for us as well. Um, we've added new microphones for the congregation into the sanctuary. Um, there's another one we're getting ready to add in, um, hopefully this week and maybe next week. That way you guys can hear the congregation singing online. It kind of makes it feel more like you're there. And that's, that's our goal is to try to make it feel as much as we can like you're um, present in the sanctuary with us when you're online. Um, we've also added some in-ear monitors to clean up stage noise. Um, and I, it's kind of a, a geeky, nerdy musician thing, but the, the stage noise um, really is, is everything that we are playing on the stage. So the piano, the monitors, all that stuff just contributes to noise on the stage, which goes to the first few rows and it kind of messes with the sound, muddles it up, and it kind of makes it harder to mix, especially in our sanctuary, because it's, you know, it's, it's designed to not necessarily need speakers. So any extra acoustic noise that you're making makes it harder to mix and have a good quality sound. Um, so these in-ear monitors, so you may have seen Jen and I kind of mess with them, trying to figure out you know, how they fit in our ears because it's really new to us as well. Um, those uh, those are a needed addition to help try to make the online broadcast a little bit better make and make us be able to hear ourselves a little bit better on the stage as well without muddying up on what you guys are hearing and experiencing out in the sanctuary. Um, it goes to that point. And we threw about a million different things at RJ. RJ has been amazing throughout this process. We... Uh, He's been able to go with all the punches, all the new softwares. Uh, he's helped me mount the cameras, run cables. Um, really couldn't have done all of that without RJ. All being said, this is your opportunity. Tell us what you like um, in, in the in the comment section. Tell us what you like. Shoot us a note um, through our Facebook page. 
um, or you know, just stop us after church and say, hey, these things are working, or something along those lines. We really do appreciate the feedback that we get. And honestly, any comments on here help other people see this so they can see what's going on and what we're doing as well. So tell us what you like. That being said, I'm going to run through the last few weeks worth of services and kind of give you a little bit of a rundown. This is what I was doing before we started doing all those other things and I kind of got a little, uh, little out of hand with um, being able to stay caught up on doing this. So this may be a little bit more bridged than I normally would would have done, but we'll, we'll try to go through it. So the June 14th service, Who is God? That's a big topic, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> a bit... Uh, a bit of a, a bunch to uh, to bite off there, um, and my my thought was really I was I'm listening to a bunch of different studies and and trying to figure out you know, who is God, how is God revealed in the Bible, and and who is God, which you know, I, is a very big concept, and I don't think it's something that we can truly ever grasp as humans because God is God, right? Um, and then going into all the different thoughts and, and how pe different people read the Bible and how, how they view God and how they think other people viewed God, it really kind of got muddled up um, for a little bit there for me, trying to figure out, okay, what am I supposed to do with all this information I'm getting? And you know, one, one person I, I heard was talking about Ecclesiastes, and it really came down to this final verse that made it simplified it, I guess, that um, Ecclesiastes 12, uh, 12 through 13. But beyond this, my son, be warned, the writing of many books is endless, and excessive devotion to books is wearying to the body. The conclusion, when all has been heard, is fear God and keep his commandments, because this applies to every person we tend to make things too complicated sometimes. We do all these studies, and, and don't get me wrong, studying the Bible is great. Trying to figure out God is an amazing thing that we should all be striving for. But we've got to keep the main thing the main thing. Keep our focus where our focus needs to be. And the short answer of who is God is revealed through our Lord Jesus Christ. And God is love. How do we know this? Well, the scripture tells us. And honestly, you, you, when you, if you know Jesus, that's the first thing that you know is that He died for you. He loved you so much. He died for you. He, it is revealed, that, and it's also revealed in First John four seven. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So to know God, you have to love. You can't love. You can't know God if you don't know what love is. And the ultimate love was through Jesus. That brings us to next week's service, June 21st, which I titled, Greater Things Are Yet to Come. Now, there are a lot of things going on in our church and in our community um, uh, with, you know, the Hope Outdoors. We had VBS coming up at that point. We had, uh, we've got the mission trip still coming up at this point. Um, we also had, um, the well is, is a new thing that's starting in town that, uh, is kind of a neat event. And there's, there are, um, a lot of things And we just came off the, the mother, the father, daughter, mother, daughter, um, event. And we've got the, the father, the, the son event as well coming up. So there's just a lot of things going on and, you know, a lot of work is being put in that by a lot of different people and just remaining faithful to that and knowing that, Hey, God is working these great things. So even when we get down that. God has done these great things and he's going to keep doing these great things. And if we stay faithful, greater things are still going to come. That's based on John 14, 11 through 12. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do because I go to the Father is doing amazing things here and he wants to do greater things if we are staying faithful to him um and mike that week also talked about the prodigal son and and him returning which kind of um, built into my the next set june 28th and running the race for god um you know the the prodigal son was running away and then it, he comes back to, to beg his dad just to be, be a worker, and his dad is running to him. 
um, and it kind of goes into our relationship with God. Um, is are we running away from Him because He's running after us? All we have to do is turn and and, and back and say, "I just want to serve You, God," and He is there to greet us uh, with His love. And then um, Second Corinth, or sorry, First Corinthians nine twenty three through twenty six, it says, "I do all things for the sake of the gospel, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it." Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. Then They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way as not without wing. I box in such a way as not beating air. When we are working for God, are we working to stay busy to do things? Are we focusing on what God is calling us to do and trusting in Him? And um, Jen's like, well, you should probably put some practical tips on how do you run after God? And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right because I tend to skip over the practical things sometimes. And um, so she's, she's very good for helping me out and pointing those things out. So how do we run after God? First, spend time with God. Uh, I mean, and, and not just in Bible reading and and um, in singing songs or on Sundays or on Wednesdays or in a Bible study, but just alone time with God, just sitting and seeking God in the stillness, knowing that He is there, spending time with God. Pray. Uh, prayer is the ultimate way that we talk to God, right? So how can we run after God if we're not praying? Um, read and study your Bible. Obviously, that's God's word um, uh, told through through His people. So, of course, we want to read that to spend time with them, and spend time with other believers. You can't um, know who God is fully without knowing His creation and the people that He created. We all have different experiences that we bring, and God is revealed through each one of us in different ways and different things that He's done in our lives. And I found some of the ultimate ways to know God's expressions of love and expressions of things he's done is to know what he's done in other people's lives and how they see things and how they've experienced God. It, it can be an amazing thing. Um, find a mentor or a mentee, somebody that you trust, that you can talk to, that can bring the tough questions to, um, and be a mentor. If, if there's some a spot where you've got some sort of expertise and somebody's wanting to learn, um, feed that to them. Like God has put us, given some of us different expertise in different areas, so we all have a, an opportunity to serve him in, in many different ways, whether it's learning from someone or teaching someone. And find your ministry. Find what God is calling you to do. There are a lot of different things, and, it, and maybe it's just for this season, and maybe it's for multiple seasons. Maybe it's a calling on your life completely to go do something radical, and or maybe it's something very simple. But God has a ministry for each one of us, something for us to do to serve him. And then one thing that we always say is start small and train big. So it, it start small. Start with one step. If, if, you're, if, you're, if you need to spend time with God, do you set a daily time with to be with God. And it, and it doesn't have to be a long time. You, I know a lot of people are really, really busy. Um, I know the COVID time, we've had more time. Um, or some people have anyway, but uh, there's a lot of things to do with work, with kids. Um, but we still need to set that time, make God a priority. Whether it's we start with five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day, just, just find that time. Same with praying. Do you pray daily? Do you praise God daily? Um, for me, a lot of times, praising God is, is singing on the way to work, uh, and, and prayer is can be a constant thing in any in any time. And it just start small, like I said, start small with one prayer a day, one prayer a night, maybe when you're going to bed if, if you're not currently doing it. Um, same with reading your Bible. If you're setting a, a time aside to be with God, to pray, to to read your Bible, even if it's just one verse um, daily, those things build in, on themselves. Um, do you, and then spend time with other believers. Are you are you attending um, a Bible study or are, are you part of a small group? Um, even if it's not within our church, is, is there something online you can do? Um, for me, a lot of times right now, it's listening to podcasts, um, driving to and from work. I've got a long drive, um, and it's a way I can 
hear other believers and, and their perspectives on things. Um, and, and a lot of our, our worship podcasts and other worship leaders are going through and seeing and doing and, and their experiences. And that's been very beneficial for me. It's just one idea. There's there's a whole bunch of other different ways to find other believers that you can uh, you can um, spend time with. And like I said earlier about a mentor or mentee, do you have someone you can ask the hard question? Someone you can trust that won't just shrug it off or, or say it's being silly, but somebody that will help you try to find those answers genuinely. Finding your ministry, where do you serve? Where can you serve? God is always there running after us. So the question with this week was, are we running after him? Now, on the upcoming week, if we're running after God and God has all these great things, this week is all about God being a living hope and living within us. First Peter 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through the faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Jesus is alive. He is our living hope. Uh, you know, Jesus' spirit is moving in waiting to meet us here if we seek him. Um, he is revealed to us through a spirit that leads us to a knowledge of our salvation through a sacrifice. And the salvation is reserved for us in heaven as children of God. There's a lot in that verse. A lot of, of, of big, amazing things that Jesus has done for us. Things that are, are hard to understand sometimes. Um, this week in particular has been a little rough um, for me and, and for the, the place where I work. Um, our market president passed away on, on Sunday evening. Um, he was 42. Had two kids. Um, he'd been battling a disease that's fairly rare. He didn't even really gotten a diagnosis on it, and it was a fairly sudden thing. And sometimes it's a struggle to reconcile those things um, and understand how this fits into God's plan and things of those nature. And then everybody's kind of struggling with that. But then you see people pulling together. Um, you see people rising up in places where they wouldn't normally rise up um, to come together in support of this family and and to uh, to lift them up and in a, in a time that I, I can't even fathom um, and I know that there are things that we won't ever understand it's like trying to understand God but what I do know is that Jesus is alive he is our living hope and that if we live through him, if we trust in him, if we know him, we know that he is love. And that love is unending regardless of our circumstances, regardless of what we're going through, regardless of things that make zero sense to us. He loves you and he's always there for you. That being said, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you Sunday morning at 10.30, either at the service or online. Love you.